gentlemen, and welcome to the March 1st, 2021 Selectman's Meeting for the Town of Ware. Doing via Zoom, um, call to order, do a roll call. Uh, Vice Chairman Hippler. Present. Uh, Selectman John Osborne. Present. Selectman Sherry Burdick. Present. And John Van is not with us. Or is he? He's here. Okay. Selectman John Van. Okay, everybody's here. Um, the first item on the agenda will be public comment. Do you have anybody for public comment? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Seeing as we don't, uh, no department or committee um, meetings, department had a committee meetings Chief items. Mo Chief Moore is on. Chief, right. did you need something? Chief Moore? Yeah, I'm, I got it. Had to find the unmute button. Sorry. Um, I was just going to provide follow up to the discussion last week where we discussed with uh, the police legal advisor, Attorney Connolly, um, where he recommended civil process be used by all seasons for violators of contract. Um, I sent an email out to Hill, the Hillsborough County Attorney and the New Hampshire Attorney General's Office requesting legal guidance on the matter uh, the following morning. I received a very prompt response from the Hillsborough County Attorney, John Colon, um, who called me on the phone and then followed up with an email. Um, he agreed with Attorney Conley and recommended no law enforcement action be taken at All Season Campground as it was, it was a civil matter. Um, the next morning, I or act, it was the next afternoon, I received a phone call, uh, followed again with an email from Senior Assistant Attorney General S. Morell. Um, she agreed with the Hillsborough County Attorney, uh, Colin, and recommended no law enforcement action taken as it was civil. So in summary, confirmation from the police legal advisor, Hillsborough <laughs> County Attorney, and Attorney General's Office that trespassing concerns in the All Seasons Campground within a resident should be handled civilly as it is not a law enforcement matter. Um, if anybody needs anything else, just let me know. Okay, Chief, I think that's been passed along to them up there also by uh, the, the, your email was shared with us. Is yep. that correct, Naomi? I shared it with all of you. Yep. I didn't share it with them. I just shared, okay. I shared what Chief Moore gave to me. I shared with all of you. Okay. Thank so we'll you. Yeah, not I didn't, we'll let, I didn't send we'll it down. Them. Yeah, right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, if they, and, you know, this only applies to in residence. Obviously, if they have concerns with the gate or anything, um, that would be trespassing. And we'll obviously handle that um, with, with our authority. Okay. Okay, thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Any, anything else on department heads or committee items? Nope. Chief Vizina is here for something else, I believe. Okay. Is, your next item. Yep, your next item. The next item on the agenda is a, a presentation of a proclamation. Is uh, Chief Vizina there? Uh, no, but I can see Ray. I know Chief's on, but um, someone's with Ray as well. Okay, so uh, can they hear us? Um, Chief Vizina, do you know if they can hear who lives there? Their microphone is muted, but I don't, I mean, as long as they can hear us. Okay. Uh, I'll start reading it. Uh, the following is a proclamation. Uh, the Town of Ware, New Hampshire, Forest Fire Warden to Raymond T. Eaton Sr. Whereas Mr. Raymond T. Eaton Sr. has been the fire warden for the Town of Ware and will now be retiring. And whereas Mr. Raymond T. Eaton Sr having been appointed by the director of the New Hampshire Forest Protection Bureau as fire warden for the town of Ware and serving in that capacity for 22 years. And whereas Mr. Raymond T. Eaton Sr., also having served as deputy fire warden for the town of Ware for 10 years. And whereas Mr. Raymond T. Eaton Sr. will be missed both professionally and as a friend and has displayed the highest example of character, ethics, morals, and unselfish service. Now, therefore, be it 
resolved that the Ware Board of Selectmen honor and congratulate Mr. Raymond T. Eaton Sr. and express our sincere appreciation to him for his unwavering dedication and service to the town of Ware for a combined 32 years of outstanding service as the Forest Fire Warden. Proclaimed this the first day of March in the year of our Lord, 2021, by the Board of Selectmen. Congratulations, Ray. Thank you very much. Thank You'll you, be Ray. sorely missed sitting down there at the firehouse in the afternoons. Thank you for your many years of service to this town. I missed it. <laughs> Your microphone's on now, right? My microphone is on? Yep. <laughs> I miss it very much. I'm just glad I could do it as long as I did. Yep. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Raymond. I learned to swing in once in a while. <laughs> Thank you very much, Raymond. Thank you for the thank you. Thank you for the guys that are over there with you, Ray, too, as well. Thank you for Chief Azina for pulling it together with me. I appreciate it and all the guys that are there. Yep, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you, Ray. Help a job. <laughs> That's not. Yep, Bobby's gonna yeah. have some big shoes. <laughs> a couple of them. <laughs> Ray, turn yeah, it around. Uh, Raymond, turn it around and then say something so that we can see. Been an honor to have done it. <laughs> say more, Ray. I would do it again if I got a little bit younger. <laughs> but it's pretty hard now. All my movement is right here back and forth in the house. I haven't been out since I got home. <clears throat> but I appreciate it greatly. We appreciate it too. Yeah, we appreciate your service. And... You keep your eye on me. <laughs> <laughs> We try to. We try we go to. Way back. <laughs> now Jack and I go way back. Yep. <laughs> ah, way, way back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, be well, Ray, and we'll see you when, uh, when this all passes. I hope that we can get together. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yep. Okay. Okay. Next item is going to be the manifest. To order the treasurer to sign the payroll and accounts payable receipts and checks dated March 4th, 2021, as included in the following manifest. Payroll manifest for $75,367.47. That's the weekly in the fire monthly payroll. Accounts payable uh, manifest for $31,239.68 for a total of $106,607.15. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Vice Chairman Hitler seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Jerry, yes. Uh, John Van? Yes. John Osborne? Did we lose him? Oh, I said yes. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Okay. And uh, yes from me. So, yes from me. Yep. And right, yes from Vice Chairman Hitler. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the minutes. For 220, uh, 221. Uh, yeah, 222, rather. 21. Okay. Anything on page one?
Anything on page two? Anything on page three? Anything on page four? Anything on page five? Look at page five, I'm trying to look. I I think I lost them here. Hold on, I lost them on my screen. You still got, can you see them, Rick? I'm still trying to load them over here. Yeah, okay. Now all of a sudden I had a glitch. Hold on, they're coming. They're coming, they're coming with the, the speed of sound here. All <laughs> right, uh, page, all right, so we go from five, anything on five? Yep, I get the five. Page six. That's the end of them, Jack. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get the page six. Okay. All of a sudden, they come back. Um, move, move to approve as a uh, written. Okay. Uh, motion by motion by Vice Chairman Hippler and seconded by Selectman Burdick. All those in favor? Yes. Vice Chairman Hippler, yes. Selectman Burdick. Yes. Selectman uh, Osborne. Yes. Selectman Van. Yes. And Selectman Meany, yes. Okay. Next one is the administrator's report. So I didn't get a chance to send you one. And I apologize I didn't send you one last time when I had such a long one. Um, just going to follow up on a couple things. Um, the town mailers I picked up this morning and dropped over at the post office. They should go out tomorrow. Um, and the town reports are also here. I put a box in Maureen's office. They came out very nice as well. No, um, <laughs> say that That's again. Mine. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and then the lost it for a second. Um, the guys went over and worked. Um, so that's basically what I had under my report. Um, where's the meet the candidates? We're still getting questions, you know, people requesting the um, link. Uh, no questions have been sent yet, um, but I'll put the link together probably tomorrow. I have Zoom tomorrow night with zoning board, um, but then Wednesday night we have Zoom with the meet the candidates at seven. Then Thursday night is meet the candidates or meet the school candidates. Um, also at seven. Um, next week, there's four more meetings. Um, but we'll get through this for the month. Um, and let's see. The forest, uh, we, we, are now the, we now are the proud owners of the land through the town forest account. We closed on Wednesday afternoon. Um, so that is a done deal. Gazebo sign. Um, I did pick up two signs for the bank's property. The third sign for the gazebo, he hadn't finished when I was there. Um, I'll probably end up getting it sometime this week. I know Benji's going to put up voting booths next week. I don't really know what the weather's going to hold for this week, so hopefully he can at least get the bank's ones up, and if the gazebo one gets here, we can get that up as soon as possible as well. Um, then uh, on the buildings, the ESP was here on Thursday and Friday. Um, I had to call Carol Johnson because they needed an outlet. So we get that done. Um, I did happen to when I was out getting the mailer, I saw that they were there finishing up. I spoke to Jeff this afternoon and he said they were all finished. Um, he inquired about um, that the bill may be a little bit higher 
when they get down in the crawl space, um, I guess things were extremely tight and they spent an awful lot of time trying to get down under either some large beam or something to, to get access to the all sides of the building. So I'm not sure what the bill will look like. He wasn't going to, you know, um, it wasn't going to be a whole lot higher, but I'll see what it looks like and you'll see what it looks like. Um, I don't know, haven't been able to physically talk to him and test it. So I'm not sure. I'm sure they would have tested it. I went, I didn't get the key back today. So I'm sure that they'll return the key and we can have that conversation, but obviously he's not going to cut us loose without testing it. Um, at the same time, I guess we have to have a conversation about, um, Selectman Burdick when she went over there, discovered there's a cap missing on the Stone Memorial Building, a copper cap. Um, we can give a shout out to Walker Roofing, but I'm still waiting on him to call back and schedule for the town hall. Uh, but I'll take, I'll let you guys decide what you want to do with that um, from there. Um, I know he put on the roof, but it's been a long time. Um, Naomi, just so you know, Naomi, just so you know, that um, piece of copper cap is actually inside the building. Okay. Well, the board needs to discuss what we're going to do and what we're going to do next with that. Yep. So I'll let you guys, I mean, that's really all I had. Um, when next was week, the we have a busy week. When was the last time you spoke to the gentleman from Walker Roofing? Uh, it's, well, it's help probably about back. January or more. I've tried to get him, but I didn't try very hard. I talked to him. He, I told him what I was looking to do was get on the schedule right in April because we talked about the rot. We've always talked about the rot, and the rot's not going to get any less. Mm -hmm. So I told him, reminded him of what he had put in writing to us. He was going to verify that that was still good, and he would call me back. Have when I picked did, up what, the phone and bugged him again since then? No. Um, you know, we had the town meeting and things like that and everything else going on. But I would have thought that, you know, when they said they'd call you back, they'd call you back. I shouldn't have to keep chasing him. And as I spoke to Sherry today, he's not the only game in town, I can't imagine. Um, you know, and, and, and Ricky is one that, too, has also joined in. And that rot keeps getting more and more and more. I realize he probably does good work, but if you, and maybe he's too busy, but doesn't want to say it. Um, what, Naomi, when did you call him? January? It would have, it would have been in January because I okay. wanted to hop right on April's schedule. Okay. And I said, I told him what I was up to because if we wait, it's going to be till summer because he's going to yeah. be booked up. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm happy to try him again now that we've got everything under control. I just didn't think I should have to keep begging him to come to where, you know, it's gotta be other people out there. And I think you're gonna, you know, he gave us a per price who didn't include materials and, and that's where we were going on it. But then to tell me, he's gonna have to make sure that price was still good. And to let me know here yeah. we are April's next month. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. My suggestion would be is to try him again this week. Okay. Uh, and um, if you don't get any response, then I guess we should probably stop looking for somebody else to. So what do you want to do with the cap, though? I mean, have him come down and look at it. I mean, what's I. I, I mean, if he's going, if you can get a hold of him, um, if not, we're going to have to get somebody. So, I mean, we'll have to research to find somebody that will do copper and replace, repair it, replace it, a roofing company. You know, not everybody does that, but. I have a question about this copper cap is the if this cap is not on the roof are we in danger of having water intrusion or with these high winds of any more damage whether there's panels flying off or whatever well i can't answer that question because i i don't i didn't have a truck available today really somebody needs to look at the roof i don't know that that's completely sealed up. And we had rain this weekend, so I have not been back in the building. The only reason I saw it was I was going through town, going to Concord on Thursday, and saw the piece of 
piece of cat was hanging about two and a half feet off the back of the building out, you know, straight. And, it, you know, I saw it immediately. So I pulled in and walked out and walked around the building. At that point, it was still on the building. But around one o'clock, the two girls that were going to be doing some spring cleaning um, showed up and they, they uh, emailed me and I wasn't here. And so um, when I got back to the house, I called them and they said that the cap was on the ground when they uh, arrived. They happened to see it. And they uh, also uh, you know, said that they couldn't stay and work because it was they were working in both rooms at that point. So that's all I can tell you. I haven't seen the cap. I haven't been in the building since, and I haven't been up. I've been up, but I haven't been in the building. I was up today to sign the manifest. How old is this roof? This this copper roof work. How old? That, how that old? was put on in two thousand eight, I believe. All but right. Was it put it was, on by Walker Roofing or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do we, is there some kind of warranty? I know like with uh, a new roof, typically you have like with shingles, you have what, a 20 year warranty or whatever. Is there any kind of warranty on this? Well, it's not that the, the thing has failed, it's that a clip broke. So it's a matter of them coming out and re, just reattaching it as far as I know. I mean, they're not gonna warranty that a clip might break. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't know much about copper roofing. I'm just trying to understand yeah. the full we, we had with, getting this re reinstalled right away right it needs to get back put back on right away and hopefully it's not bent because when they did that um roof i had them do the same profile because it's a historic building as what was on there the the caps and they had to take the copper down to boston to have the caps form so and they took an old piece of cap with them to form it to the same dimension so everything appeared to be the same once the new roof was on so ho hopefully it's not bent up i haven't like i said i haven't seen it it was still up on the roof the day i when i saw it on thursday so i can't tell you any more than that i i do have to go through town tomorrow so maybe i can if they're all done working up there maybe i can just swing in and take a look at I mean, if it if it rained in, it's probably going to come down through that 18 inches of insulation and, and may have soaked up the the uh, blue board and stuff and the plaster. But I don't know that. Like I said, I haven't been up. There wasn't anything I could do. I didn't have a vehicle here, you know, to look to see if it was not fully sealed up or not after the cap came off. But I... If we have, it up, if we have the even the slightest risk of water intrusion. It sounds like something does it, we need to move on rather quickly. I don't know what everybody else's feeling is, but. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they put the roof on and, you know, I, I would, again, they're on there regarding their timeline. I would say just come fix it. Right. Get it done. Uh, but if they're going to put us off for a week, two weeks, three weeks, then we got to find somebody else. I mean, it's, it's got to be fixed. The, to quote it to me is, is a little ridiculous at this point. Um, but if their timeline is going to be two to three weeks. Then... I think the other thing is, is if they're not going to come and do it, we'll have to start looking for somebody who specializes in doing copper roof because not every roofing company will do copper. Right. Copper. And I, and I understand that, but that, what, what I mean is if they're going to give us a two to three weeks, say, all right, we'll let you know. And then like you said, start on the hunt. Yep, I, I would say I wouldn't even give them a week. I'd give them, you know, get a, if you can't get an answer this week, then start looking. You know, find yeah. something. Absolutely. I don't know. If we have a hole, I wouldn't even give it a week. If there's if mm -hmm. there's a chance that this is going to get even more worse, then it sounds like we need to get somebody on the ball here the next couple of days. <laughs> at least temporarily fixed. Yeah, like I said, I don't know if there's any water infiltration. It's been, and that's five, we're five days out now. So I don't know. I would say get it fixed sooner than later. That's for sure. Well, the other question we don't know is how long it's been dangling off the back of the building that nobody noticed prior it, to that. It wasn't dangling two days before because I was up there. Yeah. I know it wasn't dangling because I look at that roof every time I'm there to make sure there's no problems. The, um, well, they, 
and the workers have been up into the attic, so up into that crawl space, so they may know if there's any damage. So they may have to check with Jeff, I would say, or somebody to see if there has been any leaking. They could tell you right off they've been up there. Okay. You want to try that, uh, Naomi? Yeah, I can do that. Contacting them? Yeah, sure. Okay. That's all I had, actually. Okay. Um, okay, next is uh, correspondence or other business. I had one thing under other business, and that was uh, for food for thought is to, um, after uh, the election, is to um, see about going back to every other, um, every other week, um, say the first and the third of the month um, for our meetings instead of every week. I don't know what anybody feels about that, but and then if we have other meetings as necessary, if like we've done before. I think that we probably ought to wait on that decision until after the election. If uh, if there is a change in a board member, I think that other person ought to be involved in that decision. That would okay. Agree. Okay. What about uh, John and Sherry? How do you feel? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't have a problem with doing that. Okay. Ho hopefully in April we'll be back. Hopefully, maybe meeting at the at the town office. That would be nice. Well, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, um, yeah, we'll know that at the end of the month. So, um, yeah, we can decide then. Well, I have nothing else. Uh, there's nothing else on the correspondence or other business. Can I? Can I just ask one question? Was it 32 years at Ray? Was a was the fire warden or forty two? I couldn't hear it. Thirty two. Thirty two. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. And did somebody that was over there tonight might have taken a picture of Ray with his with his framed up? Maybe uh, it looked like C two was over there as well. Yeah, yep. just it'd be nice to have a picture. That's all. If you know somebody, Ricky, if they could just email me a picture. Yeah, I'll see what I can find out. And then I can put up something together, maybe put it in the Historical Society newsletter. Okay. Anything else on the correspondence or other business? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? John Van Gary, uh, Gary Burdick, yes. John Osborne. Yeah. Uh, Chairman Meany, yes, and Vice Chairman Hippler. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's it. Everybody, have a good night. Yeah. See you later. See ya. Yeah. Bye.